And we will read the first five verses all together, just a short passage. So let's read all five verses together tonight. Ezekiel chapter 35, verses 1 through 5. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. And that's the last verse we'll read, verse 5. Okay, thank you very much. You may be seated, and I'll lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, that we can have the word of God and hold it in our hands tonight, read it together. And Lord, as we um, start into this Bible study tonight, open the word of God to us, help us to understand it and to let it be applied in our hearts and lives and cause us to, to love you more and fill our preacher with your spirit. Meet with us now, please. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. I hope you've been making notations in your Bible or in your note pages, uh, being able to divide the chapters as we have been doing. Uh, of course, just because I suggest it doesn't mean you have to do it. Many people do not mark in their Bibles, and many people do. Uh, I remember I got in trouble in high school one time when I was sitting in speech class, and I had read something out of either First or Second Kings. I've still got the Bible and still got it marked in red. And uh, the teacher walked by, and my speech teacher, and she looked down, and I had marked in my Bible. And uh, she was absolutely taken aback that I would actually mark in my Bible. And uh, so I, I, she was displeased, to say the very least, but that's okay. Uh, she was, in general, a nice lady, but didn't, I don't think she appreciated me marking in my Bible, that's for sure. Tonight, the Bible uh, lesson, the Bible study, the sermon is entitled, Mount Sears, uh, Perpetual Hatred. Did you pick that up as you were reading? her perpetual hatred. And this chapter is an indictment against Edom, which is also Mount Seir, as far as their location and how they're located there. And the people of Mount Seir were enemies of God's people, and they were also indicted way back in chapter 25. We mentioned them only a little bit when we were back there. And when God judged Judah, Mount Seir sought to take advantage of the whole situation. In other words, it was sort of like the, about what the devil is like. He's as a roaring lion, uh, walking about seeking whom he may devour. They never go to the head of the pack. They always go to the back of the pack, and there they look for the weakest or the youngest because they are easy prey. Well, here Judah, uh, when God judged Judah, and they are at a very vulnerable place, well, Mount Seir, a Moab, uh, excuse me, Edom's Mount Seir, uh, sought to take advantage of the situation. If you have your Bible there, look at chapter 35 verses 5 and 6. It says, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. There's the key phrase. They chose to do this in the time of their calamity. Uh, in the time that their iniquity had an end, uh, therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee, Sith, since thou hast not, or hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. I had one of our former members write me a few years ago and said, Pastor, is Star Wars in the Bible? And sent me this verse, the word Sith, because in the Star Wars series, there's a group of individuals who are called the Sith. And, I, and of course, they were joking. They know that Star Wars is not in the Bible. Uh, the force be with you and the whole thing, you know, Luke, use the fork, use the fork, you know, all that stuff. And so what I did was I had to study the word out because I've met very few people that have any idea what the word Sith means. And it basically means this, since, S-I-N-C-E. And uh, so you can put that in your Bible by the word Sith and understand that that means the word since. Thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And so you have that there. And I wanted to throw that in so that you wouldn't go home and say, now what does Sith mean? 
or those of you who are more knowledgeable of, of Hollywood, you might say, is Star Wars actually in the Bible? Well, of course it's not, and it was never intended. Did that, is that where uh, they got the name Sith from? I have no idea. It might be, but it is a very obscure word. And uh, blood shall pursue thee. Now, and that was whether they went after any more or not. They have, had incurred God's judgment. And they thought it would be possible for them to capture the land of Israel and Judah. Why? They were at a very vulnerable place. They were at their weakest place. Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 10, it says, Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it. And this resulted in the judgment of God upon Edom, Mount Seir. So we have that going on in this particular chapter. But the interesting thing about that is what God said about Edom. What he said about Mount Seir is that they had a perpetual hate, a perpetual hate for the people of God. Now, I want you to notice, if you would please, how Ezekiel foretells of, the, of Mount Seir's destruction and Israel's salvation. Now, this covers two chapters, and tonight we're only going to cover one, chapter 35 but it will go all the way into chapter 36, and we will do that, Lord willing, on next Sunday night. But uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the condemnation of Mount Seir. If you're one who writes in your Bible, you may want to, you may want to make a little bracket and put down condemnation of Mount Seir and, uh, and Edom as they are labeled as the same. And that will be chapter 35, verse 5, and then there's a number of verses all the way up through verse 13. Now, let me show you this. First of all, they hate and betray Israel. They hate and betray Israel. I want you to hold that thought in your mind because we have already referred to it in a previous study, and we're going to refer to it once again tonight. They hated them. It says in chapter 35 and verse 5, it says, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. What that mean? That had hatred that wouldn't quit. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Mount Seir butchered Israel after Israel had already been punished by God. They just came in and took care of them at what they want to do. But they hit them at their not strength, they hit them at their weak point. Notice secondly in verse 10, that they planned to occupy all of Israel. This was, their, this was why they were doing it. And that's chapter 35 and verse 10. It because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. So they, uh, they hated and betrayed Israel. They attacked them at their weakest point, And then they planned to occupy Israel. They simply don't care that the Lord is there. That's not their concern. The fact that notice what it said there at the end, it says, whereas the Lord was there, they were going to take it no matter what. And then I want you to notice in verses 11 and 12, that not only did they hate them, not only did they plan to occupy that, but they also slandered Israel and talked bad about them. Look what it says in verses 11 and 12. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, they are laid desolate. They are given to us to consume. And so they say Israel was given to them. That was simply not true. But here they are slandering Israel. They saw this as an opportunity for them. And apparently they thought that God, whoever they believed God was, was on their side. But sadly, look at this. Lastly, on this particular point, their, their perversion, Mount Seir's perversion, they hated and betrayed Israel. They plan to occupy Israel. They don't care that the Lord is there. They slander Israel. They Now look at this. They slander God himself. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, thus with your mouth, ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me 
I like what God says next. He says, I heard him. I heard what you said, you see. And they boast against God, and he hears every word they say. So that, we look at that, that is Edom Mounts, uh, uh, Mount Seir's perversion. But now what I want you to see is their punishment, if you would please. Under the condemnation of Seir, we have the perversion, and now we have their punishment. And these are, these are pretty direct judgments against them. And I want you to see these very clearly, their punishment. First of all, God was going to smash them first. The first thing he's going to do is smash them. Look what it says in 35 verses 1 through 4. We've been there tonight already. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, like this. Judgment's going to come. It says, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. So literally, his hand would be stretched out over him, and bam, he was going to flatten them. Why? Because they went against Israel. Ooh, I wish governments today would be reading a chapter like this. And so this is basically saying that they were going to be completely destroyed. And then secondly, notice this. God says that they are going to suffer what we would call today a bloodbath. A bloodbath. And that's verses 6 through 9. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith, that means since, remember, Thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and, uh, and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men in thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall uh, that are slain with the sword, I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. That describes nothing short of a bloodbath, that their blood will be shed everywhere in their kingdom, all by the sword. And God's going to fill the mountains with their dead, since they have no distaste for blood. God says he'll give them all the blood that they want, and it's going to be their own. And then I want you to notice this. He says about their punishment, he says that they're simply going to be wiped out. They're simply going to be wiped out. Verses 14 and 15, follow along. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth will rejoice, I will make thee desolate. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Hmm. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. And for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He says, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I do me up, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And now they're going to know that the Lord, he is God. They will see that. Because God has made a prophecy here that did come true. God has made a prophecy through his prophet. And he's saying these people went against God's. And God had already judged Judah, okay? He, he judged Judah for their sin. But Mount Seir and Edom came along and wanted to clean up what God had apparently left behind in his judgment. Because God is merciful and they are not. And I love what it says here even though it's tough to say. He says, As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee, thou shalt be desolate. And God's promises, of course, are true. All the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now, I don't want anybody to have a heart attack, but the next word in my outline tonight is the word conclusion. Okay? Conclusion. If you need to take your nitroglycerin tablet right now, place it under your tongue and you'll be fine till the end of the message tonight. 
Ezekiel has now mentioned <clears throat> Mount Seir, or Edom, twice, once in chapter 25, and again here in chapter 35. But I want you to remember what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, okay? This is a good reference for you to put. Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, where the Lord said, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee, curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's why I fear for this new uh, religious group. Now, Timberline Baptist Church is a independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist church. There is a new movement in America called the New IFB the new independent fundamental Baptist. They completely deny that Israel is still God's chosen people. They say that Christians are God's chosen people. And they base that on a number of different things that they see in scripture that are entirely wrong. The fact that Israel did forsake God, that they have denied the Lord Jesus and all that. And say, well, these could not be God's chosen people. And so they have an entire Bible studies and sermons and churches all around our country who are believing this heresy that Israel is no longer, that the Jews are no longer God's chosen people. That doesn't change. It just simply doesn't change. I read in the word of God concerning the Jewish people and Israel, words like eternal. I read words like everlasting and in the covenant that God made with them. And when I read these things, I think, where do these people come up with these other? I've got a book in my office right now written by a personal good friend of mine who sees how, who believes the same thing, that Israel is no longer God's chosen nation, God's chosen people. He sent me the book free of charge and wanted me to read it. But I know where he got his stuff. In fact, I talked to him on the phone and I said, did you get this from, uh, uh, from Steve Anderson? And he said, well, I got some of it from Steve Anderson who is the leader of the new IFB. Now, I'm not preaching against the, I, the new IFB. I'm really not. There are good men in the new IFB. They really are. I believe, however, biblically, they have been misled, and therefore they are misleading their people. And so, when he says here, that I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee. I fear for these different men and their movement. Edom, that is Mount Seir, is experiencing the full cup of God's wrath because of its treatment of God's chosen people, Israel. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 5, Whoso maketh the poor reproacheth his maker. Oh, excuse me, I read that wrongly. Whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. That's exactly what they did, Edom's Mount Sierra has done with God's people. And then I read in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 17 and 18, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it. <laughs> I like what we read a moment ago. God said, and I heard it. He said, I heard what you said. When they blaspheme God's people, he said, I heard that. And it says here, lest the Lord see it. So he not only sees and hears, listen, it says it displeases him and he turn away his wrath from him. So we have these different things that are in the word of God. So we find here uh, Mount Seir, Moab, mentioned twice in these prophecies now, mentioned twice for their treatment of God's people. And God says, I'm going to just smash them. I'm going to obliterate them. And he did.